knew it was a dumb question, but Gabriel had to ask, what on earth happened? Jason didn't really have a good answer. This whole thing got away from him in a hurry. This is not a party. This is the party. Every year, a few seniors take it upon themselves to find some sucker no one would ever expect to host the party and convince him or her to do so. Enter Jason. Jason was the church kid. He would never even attend the party, much less host it, until Lexi. Lexi was a senior and kind of a soccer groupie. Lexi and a couple of her friends realized it would be the most epic con in history to get Jason, the church kid, to host the party. So as the kids and the booze started flowing through the door, Jason realized there was no turning back. All night long, people were offering him drinks, and the more he refused, the more they pushed. Everybody was on a mission to get Captain Super Christian drunk, even Lexi. It's a funny thing about compromises. It only takes a tiny little tap to start a full-on avalanche. Jason was in way over his head. All his friends told him dating Lexi was a bad idea, but he liked her and thought he could be a good influence on her. Strike one. She convinced him to host the party, which he fundamentally disagreed with in the first place. Strike two. Then, after turning down 143 offers to drink, he finally gave in when Lexi begged him just to try it. Strike three. Now, working on beer number seven, or was it eight? Even I've lost track. He was feeling a new and bizarre combination of emotions. There was still some guilt hanging on, sure. Of course, it was stronger at the beginning of the night. It seemed that with each drink, that side of him got a little more numb. He also knew he was supposed to be having fun. I mean, isn't this why kids drink in the first place? But he wasn't really. He just kind of fell out of it. And it was in this checked out state that Lexi found him determined to make up for getting him into this situation. Ordinarily, this wouldn't have been a big deal for Jason. As you might expect from a devout Christian, he was all about purity. He followed some pretty strict physical boundaries and had only ever kissed Lexi a few times at this point. But the way he was feeling, as down as he was about everything going on around him, and the fact that he simply wasn't thinking straight, he didn't stand a chance. She was cute, she smelled great, and her voice was so soft and sweet when she made the suggestion to go down the hall. He just went with it. Jason woke up, alone in his bed, disoriented and confused. He could tell the alcohol was still messing with him and he realized he was still in the middle of this nightmare. He wondered for a moment why he was asleep in his bed, why he left the party. Then, seeing his crumpled shirt on the edge of his bed, a fuzzy memory from a few hours before flashed through his mind. No, they didn't. Did they? He truly couldn't remember, but the feeling in his gut told him he probably wasn't gonna like the truth. Jason pulled himself together and went back to the party to see if his house was still standing. Man, these kids were animals. But before he could worry about the disaster he had to clean up, a congratulatory slap in the back snapped him back into reality. Ugh, Chad Benson. Three years ago, he managed to break his legs being a moron and permanently banished all freshmen from the party. Now he was a senior and the very definition of that guy. Seeing that his congratulations was falling on confused ears, he showed Jason the text thread that had been circulating the party for the last couple hours. Yep. 
it happened. The realization was so surreal, he wasn't sure if he was gonna puke, cry, or pass out again. He felt such disgust for all the eyes on him, rejoicing in his failure. And if he wasn't so disoriented or out of it, he probably would have punched Chad in the face. It would have been the least of his problems at this point. Lexi was nowhere to be found. Jason wanted to both confirm what had happened and to make sure she was okay. He figured she wasn't feeling quite the level of regret he was, but he did care about her and wanted to talk about it. Unfortunately, she bailed. Once she returned to the party and the text started flying around, she couldn't handle all the judgment. Perhaps it was the crass comment that I won't repeat verbatim by Chad once again. Man, I hate that guy. He implied that she'd robbed the church kid of his virginity. And that pushed her over the edge. She realized Jason would probably wake up to a truckload of regret instead of a fond memory of togetherness. And with that, she broke down and ran out of the house. At this point, all Jason wanted was to get all these people out of his house, to go to sleep, and to process all that had happened. But how do you get dozens of drunk and or unconscious teenagers out of your house? Oh, that'll do it. Next time, at the party. Gabriel and Jason hadn't been hanging out much lately, until that one Sunday morning when he woke up to a lock screen full of notifications. Gabriel offered to help clean up so Jason's parents don't totally kill him and maybe it wouldn't be so bad. Of course, what Gabriel didn't know was that just before he got there, Jason's parents had texted him. <laughs>